it's a good day to have a cup of coffee after you're done with this meeting and talk about things within. I see Brian the happiest in the room on that comment. Um, then you, it will give you some time to, to start working and having a conversation within the subcommittee. It's just like a professor saying, all right, okay, this class is participatory. I'll lecture for first half an hour and then you guys can meet in the groups. It reminds me so much of that and I miss classrooms so much. So thank you for making me feel like that. So that, that's, that's a good one. Um, I'll be brief. We had, um, we had gone for a few events to incorporate as a first phase of listening and learning to incorporate um, not only the, the insights and comments and discussions, but actually the, the logic behind forums was to, to make it more human rather than just technologically getting information. We talked in person, shook hands, understood the meaning of the word rather than just the literary, but also what is driving that. And one thing that I felt was this is the right time from an internal community perspective to to start a long term strategic planning process. Not only did it give a much needed direction, did it give a cohesiveness, it also gave a shared vision, especially within the context of changes that are happening in the higher landscape. But equally important, given our not so rosy financial growth trajectory, uh, and to sustainability, vitality, etc., there were concerns. And then there was some sentiment that what's next? Not just out of the concern, but in general, you hear a lot of skepticism about higher education, a lot of mistrust about the quality of education in general, a lot of nervousness about structural slash financial models of higher education, especially in the public sector, state universities, especially given the um, dividend financial support from state, uh, and especially in Connecticut. Um, we heard in the first phase, as to what exactly are the most important elements, pillars, if you would, a blueprint for what should we be covering in this strategic planning. And we figured out in the first um, phase, all that information as to what that phase was, when that phase was, who did what. That data was collected and um, the forums data and the survey data collected, analyzed, synthesized, and the process management group, please raise your hand if you're part of the process management group. I want to introduce thank you to you all for doing that work. So they summarized the thing and we came up with one of the five biggest elements, if you will, of that. Next step is then take that learning and have deeper dive into what, how, where, who, and what resources. That's your subcommittee's charge for today. What we found out in, in the first phase learning, and there's no surprise, we are an educational institution and we are trying to serve our community through the mission of providing education. So the first one, and then the pillars, if you would, they came up very strongly, of course, in terms of maintaining academic excellence, 
Second, financial vitality, not just sustainability, but growth, if you would. Third one was campus culture of transparency, shared decision making. They're not just fluff words, I mean it, and we want it solid in practice. And visible, accountable. So academic excellence, financial, how we make decisions with the third team, transparency, accountability, shared governance. And then certainly the community impact, how we are seen by the community. What do we do to change if there are some not so rosy perceptions about Western as a good citizen of the community? I heard that in those, those comments that we need to do more, but then how? What resources? Who are the stakeholders in that? With what benefits? And how do we assess that? Those are the questions we are asking about community engagement, but let's call it partnerships in general for betterment of our university and for betterment of our community. Last, but not the least, in fact, the most important one, is how do you let all the intellectual part of all the stakeholders, how do you incorporate that brain power, brain capital, if you would, intellectual capital, and the perspective, the lived, in experience, lived experiences into one fold, what we call as diversifying perspectives and diversifying inputs and diversity at the table for everyone. You feel not only you've been included, but also you belong here and you have all the rights. That is critical to us all as we see this community dynamic, the demographics, the changing expectations of us. So DEI, inclusion, and belonging is very big thing. So I'm going to recap quickly. Um, oh, I can do it without the notes on that. Um, thank you. So go with this. All that has to be made into a grand vision. As I mentioned, academic excellence, that's what we do, that's what our MST, that's who we, that's, that's what we were born to do. Do we do it financially responsible? That's the second aspect of financial sustainability, vitality, and growth. The third one is, how do we impact the community around us and how we get their support. The fourth one is who makes a decision with a fee it is transparent in the shared governance. And then finally, in the real sense, whosoever we serve and whosoever we are, are we inclusive? Are we sensitive to everybody's needs? Are we being respectful? Those are the five major pillars, if you would, that have come out of our service. And now what does that mean? That means that those elements need to be defined and deeper diving and giving a structure to the strategic plans. We'll have the goals, objectives, actions, assign responsibilities and resources needed. <coughs> All those subcommittees are reflective of the pillars. There are five subcommittees that we were thinking about, and those we will go online to see what are those subcommittees, and then provided right uh, all of you who have so kindly agreed to serve on, on those committees. First and foremost, before I go into the subcommittees as such, um, 
I just quickly want to elaborate the structures that are going forward when you need to communicate with each other and with, with, uh, with the committee and outside of the committee and communicate with me, etc. what do we do? Just identifying a few things here. Um, I don't know something is, is, is minor technical things you could know. Is there a way we can expand that? So the core core process management group is responsible for managing the process. They are not the decision makers, they are facilitators. And just to please reach out to anyone of the core management group. They are all here. I've already requested them to raise their hand. John is there. Charlie is there, Marinder. Uh, Marsh. <laughs> and uh, Aura. So, but them as much as you want to as subcommittee members, you have the rights to it. <laughs> and they would love me, of course, for that, though. But uh, please stay in touch with them. They are responsible for facilitating the food, the events, the summary of, um, of synthesis and data and whatnot. The next one is a steering committee. So imagine <coughs> circles. The, 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 the smaller circle is process management group. The next concentric circle is your steering committee. And the, the names are there on the web page too. It is, I very importantly wanted to remember, uh, to remind all of us that this was not appointed by me. It has representation from faculty, representation from stakeholder groups, students, faculty, staff, and will be incorporating external community members also depending upon their willingness and time and the fit, if you will, into these things. But steering committee is the next larger circle, if you will. That committee will be responsible for taking your subcommittee inputs and synthesizing the entire body of knowledge and data and finally craft a plan a document, if you will. Final shape would be created by steering group. They would steer all the different diverse bodies of work coming together. And we have, in that group, um, faculty, staff, students, as we mentioned earlier. And I will be in interaction with that group very, very um, frequently and very substantively. So your work will be brought together, integrated, synthesized, and that will become a strategic plan. Before that work of this committee becomes a strategic plan, whatever they produce as a draft document for the plan, <coughs> it will be shared with university stakeholders and, and blessings sought from major stakeholders within the university. Now, let's go to the subcommittees. Um, academic Excellence Subcommittee. The charge, I have, I have Alex, I can't have anything, Carol, Joanne, Leslie, and Ben. Again, these are not just names, these are the people that have earned and deserved the respect of those who have nominated or suggested a point before. So I'm thanking you in advance for not the hard work that you would go through and contribute, but also thanking you for your willingness to, to be who you are in the past so that you were at a stage in your in your professional career where people said, we want this voice to be represented. It's a tribute to your excellence in, in things that you've done and your, I would say, dedication to this institution. So not only thank you, but this is probably, this subcommittee will have tentacles all over the place, whether it is DEI, how do we, how do we make academic excellence by making sure that everybody succeeds? So how do we serve the, the, the inclusivity? diversity, the justice part of that, the belonging that the students do success and whatnot. So this committee will have uh, hands on for every other subcommittee as well. 
the charge here is for you all. We will send you, by the way, formal letters um, detailed as the charge said that we would, I would um, look forward to receiving your guidance and insight and support. Those emails will detail everything, uh, and the letter will accompany the emails. So don't need to take notes on what, what we are expecting in that. There's lots of things, and then I can detail you the deliverables and the philosophy behind this. So right now, I'm, the, the reason I'm talking about this is that let's remember that academic excellence, we are an academic institution that had a lot more of technical abilities than we have to be, number one. Number two, it's not just about the courses, the degree programs. It's about the future of this community, future of this institution, future of this nation, future of the generation that we are looking at. What do we teach them? How do we teach them? Are we up to the mark with quality, etc.? How do we ensure that? Are we dynamic and agile with, with respect to higher education? Are we financially able to sustain our model while at the same time delivering what the aspirations of the next generation of students are, what the needs are. Without, and that's an important part of it, education is the only, only, and in 60 years of my life, 15 years of my life, I can guarantee you, there are many people telling you education is not only but that is the only way the only catalyst that can, if at all, in this very high income world. Education is the biggest equalizer and the only way for us to ensure that the next generations do not feel as underprivileged as my mother is. That's the education. I would want to make sure that we weave together in this subcommittee's work what we do what we need to do, how we do, who we serve, how innovative we are with our programs, how do we make our programs more accessible, affordable, how do we graduate students intact, not broken, not under debt, not with mental health issues, that's your charge. Technical detail will be following in the email. Let's talk about the second subcommittee. Did, do we have an uh, academic excellence subcommittee here? Can you guys please identify yourselves? <coughs> Thank you much. Thank you so very much. Let's go to the next one, and that is your financial sustainability. Um, Jim, Melissa, Mufu, Deanna, and uh, so on. Yeah. So, can you also kindly be identified with your raising your hands because we really know a lot of eyes will be on you because we all see lots of things and say, so, are we giving us some more money in sector or not? Right? Jokes apart. I mean, this would be, in some people's mind, the survival question, right? Who does what, where, how? To what impact? Analyzing, assessing, are there any structural deficiencies that will never make us rise beyond the cuts and expenses? That assessment will then lead us to figure out what do we do so that we are not constrained every year, year after year, for X number of years from financial limitations on, number one, serving our mission of providing education. Second, serving our mission of community and nation building. How do we play by our strengths? What those strengths are? Okay. I thought there was a comment. So this finance committee will also have tentacles in what is happening in 
the epidemic of failure stage. What is happening in <coughs> facilities? What is happening in student recruitment and enrollment in terms of are we getting enough teaching revenue? And are we doing retention enough, et cetera, et cetera? <coughs> Just like academic affairs, excellence committee has tentacles over there. Financial will have an impact two way. What different divisions do? <coughs> what are that financial situation in the university? What financial decisions are made? How innovative we are in cost efficiencies and how innovative we are in revenue generation? That will impact every other entity on the campus. So, it's again very interactive. One of the things that, that I have seen at many institutions in the past is the siloed approach. Oh, I can find this way. I don't know what the heck these guys are doing here. That is not going to be a successful plan. And I would look at you all, not only interacting with your subcommittee members, but also interacting with very tight time frame we have. By May, we would have a finalized document. In summer, then we will prepare, and in fall, we start implementing the recommendations that you all make. So, with the time timeline, high energy interaction, high frequent interaction across committees and within committees are going to be the norm. And I know how busy this semester gets. I've been a faculty. But you have either nominated or you have been kind of self to say, I want to serve on this. Both of you groups have a large task ahead of you. But at the same time, if it is collectivism that we are building something upon, I guarantee you we'll be there. The box stops with us here. We are the ones who will make the decisions, recommendations and a path forward. So your work will not be wasted. It's not like any other plan and nothing happens. Plans come and plans go. No, this one is not going to go anywhere but forward to change this place. Thank you guys for contributing. Thanks for that too. Let's go to the next committee. That is DEI and belonging. <coughs> Michelle, Karina, Scott, uh, Karen, John, Mala, and Fred. Um, there are three representatives that we are waiting from Rebecca, Rebecca's group. So they will be distributed across the bedroom one of the I don't remember where they will be, but they will be placed. I know that given who I am, given my own identity as first generation college going, as uh, an immigrant here, <coughs> How important it is. It's a matter, it's a it's a matter of heart, soul, spirit, and intellect. This is a heavy lift. One can live without a master's degree, one cannot live without self-esteem, empowered, enabled, self-actualization self. This is the work of this. How do we include them to dream? How do we encourage those who have not been able to even dream to not only dream but realize those dreams? We are the ones where the responsibility lies in making pathways for those people to feel encouraged better. It is by recommending there should be no application fee. There should be a scholarship for those who cannot come up with $500 because XYZ, so you, you can't graduate because you don't have four in the class. Think out of the box, but know that what we do, and, and seriously know that what we do, even from the office of the president who's trying to get some money from legislators and governors of it, all there, all the way to the very important work that, that my colleagues do when they maintain the facilities. Everything touches this domain, this dimension 
and everything is equally important in making students feel, <coughs> yes, I want to be here. I met, uh, is there a student on this committee? Absolutely, they could be. Um, yep, it says, uh, student is Mala. Um, it is about them, but at the same time, it's also about the faculty colleagues and the staff colleagues who have lived those not so privileged lifestyles. And now they have achieved. We want to make sure they do not feel that way. And they're still struggling to be included in decision making and are they still struggling to be, yes, this is my place and I belong here. Not about students, but predominantly about students because we charge them a feeling, we promise them a dream, we dare deliver on that. At the same time, and then we have clients. What we give them will be what we reap in the future for the nation, for our individual selves. Make no mistake, it is not going to be a statement or a lip service, especially in the light of some states cutting back on the I initiative. This is our moment to show how it is done. As I mentioned, with the heart, with the spirit, with the emotion, with the intellect, with the entrepreneurship with the way of thinking systemic rather than inside that. With the chief privacy officer, there's an office, yeah, okay, I've never met that person, and I don't know what Or there are some couple of training things that that can go with us. No, that's not going to happen. Today. So please suggest the ways in which we do something meaningful rather than just creating a structure, giving some dollar amount to that structure, having a title officer there, that yeah, no. How do we change our curriculum? How do we academic affairs look at the EIS? How do finance look at the EIS? How do facilities maintain people look at this? How do students perceive what we are doing? Where are we with respect to this? What should be done? Who should be responsible? What are the best practices in the industry? That's a very, very serious work that, that's why this committee has, and I'm open to, and we're all open to you, bringing more people in, if you think, without compromising on the efficiency and communication complexity, we can have more voices heard, but I'll leave it. Every committee will have channels to hear more voices. You don't have to serve on a committee to get your voice heard. Um, the other thing that we will be suggesting and PNG will be coordinating with you all is forms, just like for the first grade form, surveys, and, and a web page for people to just keep giving their inputs, and then a web page to give them updates on as we've been doing this. No one is claiming their perfection. What we're doing here is our sincere attempt to keep everything transparent as real time and as responsive as possible. We're all human beings, there will still be some mistakes, so please forgive me, because we are many. When we start walking, we fall a lot. When we start riding a bike, we fall a lot. But then we start driving and we hit a stop sign in our cough car. <laughs> Since we're right, right? That's what we're doing here. It's better than not learning to walk, not learning to ride a bike, not learning to drive a car. Make sense? So, when I say all these things, Mary said, I dropped my class in the 12.5 at night. Stephen Agus, I don't know if he's here, oh, he was, he was in, and he's in, uh, at Southern Road, Alison, Alison, right. He and I were talking at about 11 o'clock, exchanging emails. I'm not saying we work hard, I'm saying I know you all work. These next three months will be exceptionally hard work for you all. But it's not going down the drain. It's going to be making this institution. So thank you again for this committee, and I really know 
Jerry Dan Lee being the, if not the most, I need to get to the data as they um, and remember this to make it a good, good um, piece of information. Dan Lee High School is one of the most diverse. Dan Lee City is going to be, if not already, the most diverse <coughs> city in the town chair. Uh, Jay, correct me. We are 25 plus percent of our Hispanic mm -hmm. student population. Yeah. So we are now um, almost 28 now. 28. So we are applying for HSI status. Fall Simons is leading that charge. You have a new provost who, along with Fall Simons, is going to make it happen. So this committee, the DEI committee, will take some strands of what it means to be HSI, and what we need to do to deserve that status, and how do we follow the best practices of the institutions that are following that. Let's go to the next one. Thank you again for being on that committee. I have the biggest one in terms of collective wisdom and collective movement forward. It's not just what your processes are. There's a Senate, and there is a union representative body, there's an executive committee of that, there's, that. there's an SGA. Being is not enough. This committee would, would hold the management, administration, leadership of every kind, and hold them accountable to each other to push for the best and the best. How do we become more transparent? How do we become more accountable? How do we share information intellectually as well as emotional intelligence as to what is actually going to be said beyond the numbers, beyond the very politically savvy statements on the law We want to be heard. We want to have everyone heard before a decision is made. Some decisions are meant to be made by faculty, some are meant to be made by management administration, some decisions are meant to be made by student bodies, some decisions are to be made by staff. By all means, that's how the world works. But how do we make the decisions together in a manner in which if there are impacts of a decision made by faculty or management, management and staff, some, how do we make sure that those decisions have an impact across each of these? All, all of them are. How do we make that those decisions are considerate, compassionate, empathetic? <laughs> and very thoughtfully arrived at. We need, I'm very happy to be a university standards here. It's representing staff and staff and faculty. I'm very happy I actually met my ID yesterday too. I met another, so my is going to be graduated. So I heard a lot of very positive <coughs> things as an experience in the classroom. And he's coming back for a um, graduate degree. That is a testament to our faculty and staff's caring for students. I met another alum, uh, probably I'm being recorded, so I cannot take the names. That person was also Western changed my life. That person wants to give back his life possessions to the university. How do we take it from that sentiment of me deeply in gratitude to Western Connecticut State University and elevate to every corner? And that is your shared collective decision-making processes, policies, structures. Very good culture. How do we create that culture? How do we create that trust? How do we earn each other's trust and respect that I know you may not be able to deliver on that thing, but I know you've tried your best. Let me talk with an alternative solution to what I want, but we are able to deliver on that. Let's talk together. Open the dialogues. This committee will create their recommendations, guiding us, 
to the structured processes policies and culturally ingredient to make it more human, more trusting, more of a positive rather than us versus them. I'm completely, completely, completely committed to hold me accountable if you see something that is not in line with the transparency and the shared decision-making thing. Either we will make the decision in a better manner if I have not made the decision in the most XYZ manner that is expected, or I will explain as to how I cannot make that decision in a particular that's also showing deep respect <coughs> and care and consideration for you all. An explanation sometimes settles a lot of conflicts. Let's not avoid the conflicts, but find ways to find structures and this soft time and moment to say, we're going to reimagine this whole shared governance thing here. This is your moment to do that. So I would, I would really appreciate, uh, and this meeting we have Anna, Rebecca, Adam Brewer. Only three people, or there should be more? Um, you're waiting for the elected one representing school gas money. Yeah. Okay. That will happen after Saturday. Okay. So we will have more people here. By all means, cross fertilization of ideas across different subcommittees will be welcome. And uh, when you do your forum, then it's a way and whatnot. Um, <coughs> are we here with some um, questionnaires for the surveys or subcommittees? Uh, to guide the, uh, the forums and the service. Are we giving those or are we? So John would be go to person to guide, create those specific subcommittee service. Am I speaking out of turn? No, that's correct. Okay, that's correct. I think, I think. Because there are some things that sit in my mind and I think I've already explained it to but I may not have. So John, kindly help me out with that. Let's go to the next committee. Uh, that is your community partnerships. And that is, I started that with community partnerships. I ran a lot, a lot of, lot, seriously. Sometimes I just feel like people would be sick of me by like six months. I've gone to the galas, gone to high schools, I've gone to shows, and I've gone to theater plays, and, to mayor's office and mayor's subcommittees and whatnot, and I have enjoyed every bit of it. It's almost like representing the jewel of our community, and it's, it's an honor to say, hey, I'm your best friend. But guess what? When you are in that position where you are the supplier of intellectual capital to a community, where you are also not intellectual, Creative in the sense of art, research, teaching. At the same time, you are supplier of the medicine, <coughs> the business entrepreneurs, the healthcare, the educators, the healthcare providers. Everyone looks at you with an expectation. Positively, I have not seen anyone say, "Now you guys are not doing a good job." You all said. We are doing a tremendous job. Let us know how we can support. Not even one person, even those who, even the media I have seen, have been very respectful of what we do here. Despite the main, water main breaks and all that. <coughs> Community came along. We work with the town, we work with the city, we work with whosoever in healthcare as well. We work with the Yandere Police Department when we have events and when we have concerns, uh, safety concerns and whatnot. I met with the president of uh, Yandere Hospital no once yesterday with my team. They have high expectations from us, not because we have not been doing well. They love our, our graduates. High expectations are not just because they are not happy with us, they are actually, and in this case especially, are because they know we have been doing very well. They know for 120 years we are built this community. They know we are going to be here for another infinite number of years. 
they want us to excel. They want us to maintain our standards of providing them with good art, good theater, good music, good athletics. My conversation with Mayor were about athletic facilities and summer camps and whatnot. And all these works are in the progress. Why are these community partnerships important? Well, the tentacles of this subcommittee would fall into both. Are we placing um, our, our students in internships and trainers and whatnot? So, how many businesses, not for profit organizations, hospitals, schools, etc., we know to put our students for? placements during their clinical placements, if you will, or about teaching assignment placements in schools. How many of them end up getting the jobs? Are we serving their workforce needs? How is the city of Danbury expecting us to contribute to their needs? How are we making Danbury a destination of choice? And vice versa, how Danbury can help us be Choice, the University of First Choice, among at least Denver High School students. A long way to go. I've been meeting with school district superintendents um, to figure out the ways. It's a two way street. We serve them and then they support us. Fundraising is another one. How do we deserve their respect and kind their support? They are right. It's a good institution, I want to support it. This institution gave me my life worth of dignity, job, livelihood. There was a check for your my, my expression of gratitude. By the way, shout out to those who are engaged in the hearing day. They're doing a very fantastic job of organizing. Please participate in that. If Greg is about somewhere, you will be listening to me now. I thank you for doing that. But if we're all in this together. We go out to be visible, to raise the society. Community partnerships in Jane's shop, they will be leading us towards greater enrollment. In Melissa's shop, more scholarships that we can provide fundraising. But Melissa's enrollment and student success skills, Sharia. Those are the partnerships we talk about. So this committee will take care of that aspect of how we serve them and how we deserve their respect and their <laughs> Are we good with this? So there are more committees. No. So those are the committees. Next steps would be um, a timetable for these committees to hold open forms, hybrid, online, and then have, have a survey online. Uh, there will be a timeline also that, that uh, PM people will reach out to you all. Um, my, my last word would be, let's find reasons to say yes to things that, that we can accomplish together. There will be lots of barriers. But there are people in this room who will find ways and the reasons to say yes to meeting those challenges and actually dreaming about a more sustainable, more equitable future. That I always use these two words, eminence and impact. Is, that, is there anything that I need to add more to this? Or I'm actually open for questions. Um, Dr. Singh, I'll just add a little housekeeping. Um, so here is where you can put updates for anything that you gather. And right up here is where you can, uh, John will reload the survey for you <coughs> when you're ready to put a survey out to the community if you want to. And it's also at the bottom here. And then we will um, put your results up here after it's um, collected. Sound good? So the PMG group will, will guide you as to who do you send your findings, where do you put them up, or if we put them up on their behalf, etc. So, right, folks, we can have that. That is correct. I, I just want to add that what John's going to send out 
is not limiting you in any sense. So if, you, if your committee thinks it wants to include a few other questions or look at some other information, his office has a lot of information, then please let us know or let him know. We want to work with you to design those surveys. Mm -hmm. okay, so this is not coming from John or five of us. <laughs> but but there is there is a already existing body of questionnaires. John yeah. actually will use the right? Mm -hmm. I did. Second stage. Yeah. Yeah. We have them. We have the questions. Then there is a body. I don't want you to also be burdened with finding if you don't want to find. We we'll give you a little body of questions, suggestive or indicative of what could be, and then you can add a soft track. Right? Exactly. But we're just trying to be supportive so that you don't have to really spend a lot of time researching what questions you keep asking. So in terms of timeline, when should the subcommittees expect to receive the template surveys? And then when are we expected to have those surveys completed? You know, is there a set timeline yeah. that's already been established for this? No, not as yet. OK. And we have to work through, excuse me, the meetings in the forum, so we have to nail down a date for that, and that will be sent to the subcommittees. Each subcommittee will have to appoint a chair for the committee, and then the chair will actually work with the steering committee and bring all the findings together, which will then be one final document, which will be <coughs> drafted to administration, cut it through, and then it will be uploaded. And as far as the, the survey questions, we'll send that out um, to each subcommittee and John will also um, finalize everything so that can be put up on the web, web page. Mm -hmm. um, Marsha is handling all the updates to the web page, and um, you can feel free to go on. You'll see upcoming events. Um, we'll also mm -hmm. plug in the meetings and the forums so you'll have that information. And all the communication that will go out, we'll also provide a link. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or anyone else on the community committee. So I guess I'm just unclear as to what the first step is is the first step starting with receiving the survey from John and then the committee begins its work. Like I'm just wondering how the questions are being designed mm -hmm. in advance of the committee beginning the work of what we're trying that's, to explore. That's an excellent question. So mm -hmm. let me let me um, answer that. Next step, so tomorrow morning, or if not today, you will get a, a formal charge letter as mm -hmm. to what we are expecting to accomplish with this subcommittee structure. Along with that, obviously mm -hmm. following a day later, there will be a timeline as to when subcommittees are suggested to have um, the forms. Um, so, along with, so, sorry, charge letters today, survey questions, and suggested timeline, because it depends upon who's going to do and et cetera, right? Within some ways. Uh, tomorrow, um, John has some questions he attend ready with that, and then um, along with suggested timeline. Once those surveys are conducted and, and that timeline will also be provided, so to what date the survey can be open that could be your choice or our choice, it doesn't matter because it's a little flexible. That's what we want to be flexible as to because we may not be able to wait for the next two weeks or what happens. That flexible window will be there for you to, to contribute. First step on the subcommittee <coughs> side would be asking them to the charge where you want to meet and say, all right, how, when can we meet? Not only just for designing the survey and forms and whatnot, but also once you start getting the information to coalesce that information into the summary document. So from now till end of March or mid March, um, there would be a time for you to have a series of meetings, um, looking at the feedback you're getting from the forums and that. That is something you need a chunk of work. Take that information. Incorporated to, but that information is not the only trend. There's a purpose behind populating this committee, each committee with a particular people, right? Because there's this person. So have more than one, more than four meetings, discuss it deeply, meet several times, 
and then produce a little document from the document. That is your timeline to adhere. And we would want it to be with us by um, We're looking at April, um, and then April to May, crafting the plan, so. So March, and I would say we would love to have some documentation from you um, as to how hard this PEI committee has this vision, this strategy, this object goal, this objective, this is what we think the structure should be, this is what we should be accountable, this is what we should be, what kind of resources we need. So we'll take that, and then in April, we'll leave all the subcommittee documents and those are, those are detailed as to what the deliverables are. What are we expecting again in that report, right? So it's not like there's a template kind of a thing. There's a topic that we want you to address and put in the document. So to recap my answer, because there's so many dimensions there. First, we'll send you charge letters today. John will come back to you with survey questions and a suggested timeline that fits in with this broad timeline. Then you will hold your meeting forums and wait for service, your individual subcommittee meetings to discuss it. You know, how do we deliver on this charge? And then by March end, we will expect documents that then the steering group will take together. And in the next two weeks of that time period, um, we will <coughs> that. then we will circulate that plan to the Senate, the faculty groups, the soft group, the AU people, students, um, representatives, etc., etc., and then once that is done, we incorporate that feedback and then create a final by end of April. So April would be to kind of bring all things together. Um, that's my answer to your question. Sorry. <coughs> Okay, so it might be helpful, and I'll look at Charlotte and Marsha. Once all of that is done, we could create a team, and each committee could have a channel, and then you're using the team to record uh, discussions at the meetings. You can record the meetings if you like. If there's any files or documents that uh, result, and I'm sure there will be, they can be stored in the team, and then you have everything in one place, and then you can start to aggregate things all together. So I, I can help with that, Charmaine and Marsha. This is a fine way to get things started on the website with the survey, but then once the groups start to go off and meet, we don't need five teams, we need one team, and it has a channel for each. Yeah. Sure, okay. Marsha, Marsha will be the fine person for that, right? She's, in, she's part of PMG, so, so Marsha and Charmaine will be able to finalize that. Yes, sir. So, you know, I'm a big picture kind of guy here. Sure. Um, so what was the impetus for this whole process? If there's still some uncertainty uh, among faculty about, right, is this in response to something? Is this an annual need? Is it all the above? So I'm very happy to say in a class professor would rather have others answer this. The reason for that is because I want to make sure that that I'm not imposing why Manaho wants this to happen. What do you guys think? Is anybody able to want to respond to him? Well, to me, um, the strategic plan is, is very core to, to every university. I don't know who made that up the rule of every 10 years right. <laughs> right. for it to be used. <clears throat> and we're behind the schedule. Yeah. We're behind schedule uh, for a number of different reasons, and um, our accreditation hinges on it as well, the matching accreditation. So it's, uh, I would say that it's, it's necessary for those very formal reasons, mm -hmm. but also, um, you know, we all, we all hear the same thing about how can we fix this? <laughs> right, the things that are out there. How can we um, address our financial sustainability? What are the constant? Do you have um, my launch uh, meeting? Makes me think at night. Um, is link this somewhere in the morning. Mm -hmm. the PDF. All races, um, uh, right? Remember, I presented mine. And right. if you can open that up, that would be great. We, we talk about community students, but a lot of us are community students. Mm -hmm. In terms of working, we go home. 
Dr. Just Sue. Has it happens in so, Dr. so building that sense of community, I think it's a way to, to address that. And I'm going to stop there because I, I could keep talking. Can I, 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 can I add into that? You answered my question directly. So but but there, there's, a, there's another piece to that. It's that the previous strategic plan was finalized in 27, 2018, and we were in a different world then. In the post-COVID world, it makes sense to revise a plan to chart our course forward yeah. to move out of this. Because there were some assumptions that were happening when that strategic plan was written that aren't true to that. Yeah. And Jenny, if that wasn't enough, everything that we're talking about here today, there's all kinds of technological innovations and threats to the institution of higher ed because you know, there's others that want to deliver an education in a different way and technology. And so we've got to get out in front of all that. Sure. So it's not, it's, it's also like a competitive aspect of staying relevant and being the trusted source of providing an education to society. I mean, that sounds pretty good. All right, I do have a reason. Out of raises the concern that I have about this, that I like to have a, a, a lay in some way. Uh, it's my feeling that um, in we have a strategic plan now, and that, that strategic plan was derailed by a, a number of issues from the pandemic to the financial crisis, but then in particular due to a change in leadership. And uh, I'm a little worried. We have an interim president and an interim provost. So my concern is. Uh, how do we know if we're going to make this effort to create a comprehensive strategic plan? If somebody else comes in as president, and if somebody else comes in as provost, and they have some tension with the vision that we've established, how do we know that it won't go to waste? It's a very valid question. And I'm glad you're asking this question in this forum. The provost is entering, Manohar is entering, Another VP of mine is entering, another VP of mine is entering. That actually makes me say, make it your plan, your vision, not Manahar's or my interim keys. So that the next president who comes in here knows that, I may be quite not seeking any need to change because it's yours. You're not changing, I'm entering, not you. It's yours, not Mallard's. And that's why it is crafted in a manner which is very democratic, very representative, so that the next leader will have the vision, but it will be the vision that you have directed him towards or her towards. She or he can incorporate. But this is today what my community, what my staff, faculty, students want. This will be eternal living till a new next plan comes in. And that should be at least decided by the faculty and staff to say, next five years, this, this plan is going for the 30. You craft it in such a manner. Please make sure that you all get so much input that no one who comes new can say, ah, this is not good enough. I'm going to give you another one. Stand by what you do today. So do a work that will be represented of all the ways. The second, equally important, is the reason strategic planning is needed is to give a shared, cohesive vision of the entire, the collective. Otherwise, I may be going in this direction, Jay may be going in that direction. Beatrice may be going in a different direction. No, we said, let's sit down together. This is what students have to start one. This is how we come together. The chances are that no one, so hire a smart president in case you need to change it. <laughs> hire somebody who understands what it means in terms of getting a strategic plan crafted with people as the core. Your concern is very valid. But the answer in my mind lies, it's your plan, not my interview president's plan. So that should be your mantra to, to defend it because it's your plan. Uh, Michelle, you wanted to say something? Oh, actually, 
Thank you, but you made my point much more eloquently than I would have, so I would draw on you. Thank you for the kind words. I, I, uh, yeah, so I really appreciate hearing everybody's perspectives. Uh, so once we get this, you know, uh, laid out there, how do we ensure in the years to come that we are maintaining? Like, how are we going to assess this and we're staying true to this vision? I'll give you an example. That's your answer. Let's say one of the goals is innovate new progress. You all good with that goal? Then you as a professor, or me as a president, or Stephen as provost, we get together and say, all right, there's a goal saying innovate. How many programs is my department bringing to him in for BOR? <coughs> Then you can say to Nahar, Nahar, you said you will have more enrollments. What are you doing? And I'll say, okay, I'm going to go international and go graduate. I'm going to go innovative programs. And then I'm going to have a good marketing solid plan. I'm going to give Jay some resources to the agency that. I'm going to give Melissa some extra dollars for scholarships, et cetera, et cetera. And then you will say, okay, oh, Nahar, those things are good. And then the subcommittee will give me those steps, right? I don't want to explain to you that soon enough. We hold each other accountable for the talk. I would come to the professor and say, hey, you promised me you would give me an artificial intelligence degree proposal. How can I support that proposal? And by the way, very proud of. Not heard of, not experienced in last, I started my field in 1995, that's almost 30 years. Not seen, heard, or experienced such a wonderful collective interdepartmental effort to propose a new program within three months. Math and Computer Science came up with the artificial intelligence proposal. We are hoping that the BOR will, will bless it in, in their upcoming meetings. I've not seen that. I've been in private, I've been in public, I've been in India, I've been in Australia. Believe me. And that's what tells me that no one is going to mess with this plan, because this is your plan. We are holding each other to high standards, accountable. It's a matter of resources. That also goes back to why this strategic plan. I have met with at least 100 external, my own foundation board members. I met with chancellor's office colleagues. I met with governors. Offices, met with legislators, met with students, and everybody's saying, that, so what are you going to do? What's your plan? How are you going to revive this place? How are you going to get this place out of the deficit and, and the and part is what the strategic plan is about. Not just removing the $20 million deficit and getting some money from Shasta that will be done. Oh, we need to make this place sustainable growth with better enrollment better community engagement, a place where students say, yes, this looks like reflective of my expectation. I am an individual first generation, economically, not that, that affluent. <coughs> I'm gonna go to Western. Because Western has no reason to support students from backgrounds that need to be found. If it's faculty who cares, there's an advising model that they're coming into. So it's, it's so much the standard thing. Right? Sure. And this plan will bring both resources, accountability, and the confidence together. Those are very, very <coughs> crucial questions. Not many places ask those questions, and not many places answer those questions. You know, when I was asking that question, it was a, you know, like the sub layer was about communication. Yes. And I'm, I'm liking this that we're having these open conversations and having that. And I think if we can do that more, that's going to be a good sign of health. I promise. And I should be guided by you in that direction, too. Now, I am on your web page, but it doesn't take me to the link that I want to continue. You put this also on By the way, a very good way to kind of go back to antecedents of this planning thing is my very first launch meeting. I don't remember the date, but there's a video and there's a PowerPoint that says to why do we even want a strategic plan, so that might, might be helpful in terms of explaining something to Rod in this room as to why the heck now is so, so, that's 
desperately wasting my resources at night. I need to do a lot of things. Maybe it'll be some naysayers out there, but they are only till they get the commendation. And I owe it to them. Well, I think that's a good solution to, like, you know, I think that's a good step in that direction. Well, seriously, the support, I can see the support. Yeah. And that's it. Um, another reason to do it, I think, and, and now, is that we not only need to react to the past, but we also have to foresee, insofar as possible, anticipate the future. And we see things coming, and we need to make sure we're prepared for them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Strategic planning is, is forward looking. As they say, I don't know who said that. Uh, let's be where the puck is going to be rather than the mentality. <coughs> Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> I don't know that you guys could I'm happy to answer any more questions. Uh, please, I have, I have some time. We have five, five subcommittees, correct? The five subcommittees, correct. And they are all going to be distributing surveys to the faculty and staff community and asking for responses, correct? Yeah. So I think we, you know, one of the concerns may be survey fatigue or making sure we're getting people engaged to do these surveys. Um, I just want to be, my guess is a lot of this is going to end up hitting everybody in February, the end of February, because mm -hmm. committees will start working and then they'll have their surveys in February. Um, so in terms of conveying information to the Senate, should I be saying something like, expect a whole bunch of surveys coming out of this, please be engaged? Yes, exactly. <laughs> So wait, wait till till we, we wait for a week or so okay. before we reach out to our meetings. Not till the seventeenth or something like that. So yeah, so that's fair. That's fair. So we are trying to create this this clear communication as we go forward as to how many questions in survey do I have to really as a faculty? Let's say I'm a faculty member. Do I need to put? an input in every one of the subcommittees, maybe I'm only concerned more about the financial uh, or about the EI or about this and that. So the fatigue part is very real and I know that's so we need to keep the survey short as possible as a, as um, give them a choice as to make. It's not mandatory for you to fill all five subcommittees. So pick up your own. Or we will also provide a little Space where you can just write a paragraph and say each sentence for, without answering the question. The subcommittees then will read those paragraphs and say, I think this guy wants this and this, this person wants this. There will be a lot of work that you will have to do. Surveys are one, forum will be another, you will get the feedback in the forums, and then there will be some people just writing letters to you. Encourage that, those letters to But um, point well taken, somebody will reach out to you to say, yes. This is what we want the Senate uh, to hear uh, along with specific details we provide. Whatever you want them to hear will be your call, but the t technical details will be provided. By that time, we'll probably also be having the dates of each of the subcommittee meetings. A little more clarity. Right. So thank you for the support. Jeff has been, from the very first day I've been in prison, has been in constant communication with me, guiding me, informing me of the aspirations and more importantly, um, giving his own experience and intellectual input in, in making me understand the strategy, the culture, the people, the processes. Sam has really played a very constructive role in my being here. Right. Yeah, two things. I just wanted to make one comment to Adam because you, you gave me an idea that's actually really, really easy to do. Um, and that is to have a conversation with the deans and the provosts with our annual reports mm -hmm. to make sure that the various categories neatly fit into, mm -hmm. into these buckets, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it can be reported and analyzed. Actually, you can do it anyway, yeah. but if I have to look this here, <coughs> that's it, right? To, to show how it meets these um, goals uh, of the strategic plan, I think. Uh, you gave me something to do. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my That's good because I see a lot of free time. Yes. Time. Um, my question is just very simply, I think, um, I'm not sure what the steering committee is doing while the subcommittees are surveying people. Mm -hmm. So steering committee would be receiving inputs from 
subcommittees on a real time basis, as well as now starting to work with the first phase inputs. So there's a lot of input in the first phase. <laughs> and they will start because the first phase also was quite specific to the broader vision mission questions. And the steering committee will start kind of creating a structure around which the subcommittee things will fall into place. All right, so let's so can I add a couple of things? So one way in which uh, the steering committee can get involved right away is please try to attend as many open forums as you can. Yeah. Because you will learn a few things, even though you're waiting for the reports from the subcommittee. Yeah. Just being part of the open forums is going to help. Uh, and in terms of being uh, overwhelmed with the number of servers to your question earlier, we make sure we find an efficient way to do that. So for example, one of the things one can do is actually have the open forum participants do the survey right there, because that helps them guide the conversation too. So we'll, we'll figure out a way so that a faculty or a staff member doesn't come back and say, well, I can't do so many of these. So we'll, we'll figure it out. really important is I can truly appreciate being fatigued by having many things to do at one time, truly. Um, but I think we need to encourage the completion of all the surveys because I think at the very core of many of the challenges Western faces and has historically faced is that so many of us are only focused on what was most important to us, yeah. right? Or if we're in academics, maybe we're only focused on academics and have dismissed DEI. I'm just making an example here. Um, or maybe on the, the staff side, we're only focused on the administration of things and not paying attention to the academic challenges that our institution faces. So I think while I can appreciate truly and wholly the fatigue of having many things to do, <laughs> um, especially these days, I think it's so important that we encourage it. But also, in the designing of the surveys, it's equally important that we're not repeating questions. And if we can be more encompassing of our questions, I think that would be, but that would help. Yeah. So that Absolutely. we're not feeling Absolutely. like we're answering the same question over and over and over again. Absolutely. Yes. I would just add to that, too. So they're just suggested questions. And as you kind of go down through the process, um, you're not supposed to be restricted. You're supposed to just, it should be a natural, organic process. So you can change the questions. They're just suggested. So mm -hmm. adhere to what's happening yeah. in your own group. Yeah. I mean, one potential solution that may make this better for what she's said and what I've said is if it becomes one survey from five different subcommittees, so you take, the subcommittees send the questions to whomever's going to put the survey together, and then you guys eliminate the duplicate questions and then make a single instrument, so it happens once, yeah. 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 rather than five times. So that, that's, that's, that's possible. Well, then, let's have a survey of 15 questions, four questions, or whatever, you three questions per committee, and then there's one document, everybody can look at the same document and say, all right, okay, that is about academic, but it also has an education for TDI. So that's and I think we could gather, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I think we can gather. She does the, what she means. I don't apologize to him, though. Um, I think we could gather the other information. Like, if there's a committee that's concerned that maybe we didn't encapsulate everything we wanted to ask in those five questions we were going to do on the master survey, our open forums will provide that opportunity for yeah. us to gather the other yeah. information that we might need. Like DEI and transparency. Exactly. You can see that that those are overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Um, so I have two questions. One is, um, at what point will we seek uh, input from external stakeholders? Oh, good question. I have a plan for that, by the way. Let me just answer that. Any question, then we can answer the next question. Okay. We are working with the uh, mayor's office to have a town hall, what is it, open forum at, at round table at their office, the city or their town hall, right? The city hall, the city hall. Um, we also work with the foundation board and foundation board members. We also try to, I don't know when are we doing that? Alumni event. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll have alumni, we'll have foundation board, representing a lot of external customers. And then the town, um, city, we should say, uh, January city, with the mayor. Okay. So we'll we work on those today. Mm -hmm. so correct me if I'm doing something. No, you're, you're correct. Okay. Those are the three things. Okay. 
thank you. That, yeah. That, yes. Well, that, that, yes. Um, my, so my second question, and this kind of goes back to Brian's question, which was, what does the steering committee do while we wait? And Brian, how dare you try to give us more work? But um, I have a suggestion, which is that if the steering committee does receive all of the raw data from all of the surveys and forums that have already occurred, we could start combing through that material. Yeah. And um, I mean, it, it sounds like the work has already been done to identify some themes that have emerged. But if anything, comes to our minds, we can start doing that sure, as well. Absolutely. And that's, the steering committee is, is probably going to be the heaviest <coughs> lift in mid-March articles. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can pre-pawn that mid-March onwards right now, that would be great. That's what I'm thinking. We go through that material now. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. Any more questions, comments, sign, or just is one last comment, I guess. Oh, yes, to your question uh, or comment on the response rate, I think that's a great comment you made. I think people in this room, we are like 25 of us at least, let's all commit to making sure that we go back to our departments, mm -hmm. our schools, mm -hmm. and spread this message that we need to <coughs> fill this questionnaire. I think the idea of one questionnaire is a great one. The downside it is it will be a little longer, which is fine. You know, if people commit half an hour, 45 minutes to doing it, that's all we ask for. And, but, but we need to champion it. And I've seen, all of us have, as faculty, we've seen, when you keep sending reminders, the response rate goes up, right? So. I do want to, just just to that, and then, then I'll have you, and then you. John, you would, you would want to make sure this happens a lot, that if you have only answered three out of the 15 questions, that you will not be able to submit it, or it will not be received, even if it's a seminar, and it will go somewhere else, because it was not complete. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure that even if incomplete, we accept the service, there is no dropping off, just because of that. We'll come back to you, Linda. Kathleen. Yes. Um, I'm curious about the question of the response rate. Um, you know what, what happens to me these days? When I was telling you, I slept for three hours last night, by the way. <laughs> I remember your last name, Linda Meyer. And that's where really I just. Um, I know exactly what you did. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're exactly your office is. <laughs> I know what your passion is life design around student life and there's been very success. I, uh, yeah, don't hold me to that. I said, No, <laughs> <laughs> like, Well, my question, my, 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 my question is given our impact well beyond Danbury, and I know that you were bringing in alumni as well. Is there a reason why we are focusing and just bringing a representative from Danbury? Or was there consideration to bringing, given our, especially our role right now, a very active role in the <coughs> regional sector partnerships and all of that, was there a reason why that was not considered? There's no reason because the only thing that I can see is um, who would be most interested in serving on this committee and who would be most relevant in terms of their insight. Certainly, um, regional sector partnership are then at what size are we going to see? We are going to see 60 people in the steering committee. So, overall, total, I think we already counted about 35 people participating. So, the size also becomes coordination with the meetings, etc., becomes that important. And quite frankly, if we can serve our regional community focusing on their needs, I think that's the first step, and then we can expand. That was, I think, rational. I think what, one way to do it would be to just invite like, the 10 regional high school principals mm -hmm. to that town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that would be the, the abstraction thing. I mean, there are ways to do it. Um, so going back to the response rate, like, I think it's a great idea to like, you know, condense the number of responses there. But like, is there a way, and I already sort of can hear the answer to this, but like from like a department perspective, that if you get you know the majority of your members of your department that fill out this you know survey, that there could be maybe like some sort of incentive to like donate to like a like a dog charity or something like that, where people have some sort of you know collective uh, vision. Yeah, okay, yeah, little competition. <laughs> I did the PMG group decided on that. That's a very good problem. We always do that, right? For students, when you want them to participate. So that was one of the things I was going to suggest. Maybe some sort of an incentive where you 
to be easy. You can enter into a raffle of some sort if you complete the survey, just something fun. We don't all need those things, but some people are motivated by them. Um, but the second, my question for you is, are the surveys anonymous? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Then that would be difficult to then have some an incentive for a raffle to be entered in it. Well, surveys. we can give them an option if you want to identify. <laughs> <laughs> that would be identified as, but you might have been a balloon. Oh. <laughs> uh, that would be great. But let them give a choice if you, so you're a technical person, John. Yeah, and anonymous in the sense that even if we were to ask for your information so that you can participate in this, uh, yeah. the raffle to win something, uh, okay. you don't connect it to the right. responses. Okay. Okay. To the yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Thank you. It brings it up to a number rather than like right. a specific person. That's all Because I think that's really important. We'll be that 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 to be and then now. Excellent. Any more questions? I, I, I hope I have not ignored anybody's raised hand. If I have, you have this, this is your moment. And um, I think you're good. I'm going to give you guys back 35 minutes uh, of your time. I'm so appreciative of this, and I look so forward to hearing more and more and more from you guys. I see you at your disposal. Reach out, email, whatever it takes. Um, Let's do this together.